Now we added seven more this week and we're up to 12 sites, the city and the county together. Um, we now have the capacity to do 3,500 tests a day in this coming week. So we've done 16,000 combined with 25,000 tests done by providers and our public health lab uh, in the weeks before. We've now tested 40,000 Angelinos. That's the equivalent of one out of every 100 uh, um, residents of the city of Los Angeles. And we expect to see about 30,000 new tests total between city and county and our provider testing centers next week alone. So we will nearly double the total number of tests we've done in all the weeks up to now. Um, let, again, we do have spaces available and we're gonna open the aperture a little bit this coming week as we have more capacity uh, so that more people can get tested and people who might not have as extreme symptoms can get in there. But again, this is not for people with mild uh, symptoms, but you can go to coronavirus.lacity.org. You can live anywhere in LA County and sign up to go to one of these drive-through centers and one walk-up center that we have as well in this coming week. If you don't get an appointment for the next day, and we're closed on Sundays, but Saturday and then Monday, don't worry, it'll push you to the next day to make sure you get a test as soon as possible. Uh, next, let me update you on beds. Um, there were 1,627 beds that are currently available. Uh, that includes uh, 286 ICU beds, 890 ventilators down from uh, yesterday as we do see more people coming into our hospitals. Um, this was a big week, obviously, on giving guidance for our face coverings. I could see it all around the city. Thank you to everybody who is out there making homemade ones, buying them, taking cloth, non-medical face coverings, and doing your part to prevent the spread from you to others. You, again, may be contagious, but not symptomatic, and this is a great way to stop those droplets from hitting other people and them getting sick. So thank you again. Don't take the N95s away from our medical professionals, but it was great to see LA lead on this. Uh, so many other cities have followed in the last two days, and we even heard the guidance finally today from the Centers for Disease Control uh, recommending that people do this as well. So thank you, and again, you can go to LA Protects and use the hashtag LA Protects to find great ways that you can make them, buy them, and we are working with our local manufacturers to produce five million of those here locally. Um, some other new news, uh, we moved forward as well on preferential parking district assistance. For any of you who live in preferential parking district neighborhoods um, who are waiting for those permits, and uh, we are giving folks a two-week print-at-home permit that we'll be emailing to you, so you can just put that in your car, not get a ticket. For those of you who have already sent away and aren't getting those uh, in the next two weeks, you have a grace period with your existing one. Uh, for the next two weeks. Again, folks can't park in those preferential parking districts without that, but if you have an old one, you're good for two weeks without a ticket. And for those of you who hadn't already submitted, you can now get that extension through uh, email tonight. I spoke today also, wanted to update folks with some of our national leaders, um, with uh, senators. Uh, this week, twice I spoke with Senator Kamala Harris. I spoke with Amy Klobuchar today as well, looking at what we can do to influence the next round of legislation that's coming out of Washington, D.C. And I also spoke with Treasury Secretary Mnuchin today as well. Um, I led a letter of the 35 most populous cities in America asking for the assistance that's coming directly to cities, for any city of a population 500,000 or larger, to make sure that we can spend it on all the things that we are doing, from stepping up on testing to helping us have uh, field medical facilities like we're building out at the convention center, and so much more. It was a very good conversation. I appreciate Secretary Mnuchin's help, and also that today, his very ambitious schedule of getting assistance out today uh, just two weeks after legislation passed, $1.5 billion started to flow through the SBA assistance to small businesses. I told him that cities were ready, willing, and able to help our businesses step up. Already around the country, I conducted a conference call with a number of different mayors. We estimate about $500 million in local dollars in micro grants like the ones we did with our $11 million program went out immediately to try to bridge this time between now and when the SBA loans will flow. That said, we know that the big muscle that's coming in is from the CARES Act, and we need to get that money into the hands of businesses now. 
I also told him that we need to take care of those small businesses that won't be covered by the big banks. And that's something that I hope in the next round of legislation, working with people like Speaker Pelosi, uh, working with the White House and others, we can get that in to the next round of legislation. Uh, we also have other money coming this week. Um, $50 million from our Housing and Urban Development Department. That includes $31 million in what we call Community Development Block Grant money. This is money that we spend to help the poorest among us. And we can use this and will use this on things like eviction defense. I know many people are concerned the day after uh, we see this emergency end that folks may find eviction notices and we want to make sure that people have proper legal representation. We're expanding our domestic violence shelters, services, and assistance so that nobody has to stay at home in an abusive setting and environment, but they can stay in shelters that we are expanding the capacity of. It'll go towards training and business assistance for workers that have lost their jobs and small businesses that are hanging on. And it also includes $16 million for our emergency solutions grants. These are homeless dollars that we'll put into services, into shelter, into um, transitional housing, and also to help people who have recently uh, become housed, stay housed during this crisis as well. And also almost $3 million for housing opportunities for people with AIDS or HOPWA. These are for some of the folks who are the most immunocompromised. We want to make sure that they are safe, that they are housed, that they have the assistance they need so that they do not become COVID-19 positive as well and become among the most vulnerable to losing their lives as well. Um, as many of you know, before this crisis, we've been building many bridge home shelters, transitional shelters for uh, unhoused Angelinos. And um, I'm very proud to say our 13th bridge home shelter will open in the midst of this crisis at the VA, which will help give us even more beds uh, for our homeless brothers and sisters that are out there on the streets. Today, 140 new beds will be available tonight in three new recreation centers in congregate shelter settings. Um, that takes the total to nearly 700 beds across the city. And if these three are like the, the rest of them, uh, they will be at 95 to 100 percent filled uh, right away. And I want to thank the nurses and the Rec and Parks facilities, the mental health professionals, and LAPD, everybody that is making those successful and making them work so that we can bring more people into safe locations. And I'm proud to announce as well that today the Board of Public Works approved a historic uh, partnership with the YMCA, where nine facilities will be available for folks who need to take showers, folks who need to use a bathroom, folks who are living on our streets but need to have the same sanitation uh, um, requirements that those of us that are housed doing. And I want to thank the YMCA. It will also help produce jobs for folks who have been either laid off or have lost their hours to be able to staff those and making sure that we have even more sanitation on the street. And we put dozens of new porta potties out on Skid Row and other places around the city in the last couple days as well. Um, also, in terms of our homeless response, today there are 11 leases and 780 rooms. These are hotel and motel rooms available for unhoused Angelinos. Um, and these are folks who need to be isolated, but they are not yet positive. That means that these are the most vulnerable or the most senior uh, homeless Angelinos that we have that we can get safely in. And I'm hoping that we can fill those 780 rooms as quickly as possible with the county and with our Homeless Services Authority. On top of the other 700 beds, that's nearly 1,500 uh, solutions for Angelinos who were homeless just days ago. Let me also speak to um, ways that everybody can help. And thank you all who have called and said, what can I do to help? How can I donate? What can I do to offer some assistance? And so now we've made it easier for you by uh, putting a new nonprofit directory that will match nonprofits. These are food banks or people who are assisting uh, homeless Angelinos, people who are providing comfort and care to our seniors who are isolated, to match volunteers with organizations. And it's called Inspiring Service. And if you want to volunteer, or if you're an organization that needs volunteers, from a neighborhood council to a, a local food pantry, uh, you can use this and we will match you with folks who are ready to help. You go to volunteer.lamayor.org and then click on the nonprofit directory button to see more about inspiring service. And thank you in advance to all the Angelinos who have signed up to help and who are going to help us get through this. I also want to thank on the volunteer front um, the 
a couple other folks who have donated this uh, week to the Angelino Fund and the Mayor's Fund for Los Angeles. We all know and love Connie and Steve Ballmer, um, who own the Clippers, who have helped us renovate every single gymnasium and outdoor basketball court in Los Angeles before this crisis started, who have just been incredibly generous folks helping us expand community policing in a partnership uh, that intervenes and prevents crimes and helps lift up young people uh, by keeping our parks open late in the summer. Well, I'm proud to announce that tonight they have donated $2 million to our ongoing efforts to make sure there's child care for our health care workers, to get direct assistance into the hands of our neediest families, and also to make sure that our seniors have meals. And a second thank you goes out to Evan Spiegel and Miranda Kerr. Uh, through their generosity and through SNAP and through the SNAP Foundation, they've already donated $10 million in assistance to community groups around, including a multi-million uh, dollar gift directly into the Angelino Fund and the Mayor's Fund for Los Angeles. And one final thank you to uh, uh, two people who are absolute pillars of our city, Eli and Edie Broad. I wanna thank you for your $500,000 donation as well to help us continue getting money in there. The Angelino campaign this week will start spending that money. In fact, there's 2,000 Angelinos who have already being received, are already receiving $500,000 in assistance, and the $1.2 million in grocery gift cards will be out the door this week. Uh, that's money in people's hands to get the food that they need to keep their families nourished, and $1,500 cash grants to Angelino families on no-fee debit cards, thanks to MasterCard's City Possible Network and Accelerator for America will help us make sure that some people who have been overlooked by the federal cash grants will get that assistance as well. And we're gonna keep raising that money, so anybody who wants to donate, please go to mayorsfundla.org. Every dollar that goes in goes straight out to a needy family, to a family of a healthcare provider, or to our seniors to make sure that they are fed. In a city where we have 20% of people living in poverty before this, and so many people who have lost you know, so much, this has become a national model and we want to get as many resources in there as possible. Um, I also want to thank some uh, great companies that have helped out. Triller, which is a, a digital media streaming company in Hollywood, donated 150,000 N95 masks to make sure that our first responders, health care uh, workers can be protected. Thank you for that so much. And all of us have seen just incredible acts of heroism, of generosity, and of kindness. So um, it's a lot I know for one week. I wanted to make sure everybody had that update directly. But let me just end with this. This week, you know, I haven't taken a break in 22 days, but I just want to indulge you and say thank you. Thank you to my family, to my daughter Maya and my wife Amy Elaine, and thank you to my staff here who has worked around the clock as well maybe even less sleep than I've had. Uh, they're here in a bunker in City Hall. To those city workers that are out there, whether you're in a shelter taking a night shift, whether you're an LAPD officer doing something you haven't done before, a firefighter who's at one of our testing facilities, helping folks be able to swab their cheeks and get answers to whether they have COVID-19, you all have been true angels in this city of angels. To the rest of the city, I'll say it again, this is a critical week. Each one of these weeks is, but we've seen good progress. We've seen people staying home, but don't let up. This will be the week where we'll continue to see hundreds of people each day become positive, that we will see, unfortunately, too many souls lost each day. And when we hear those numbers, and our heart goes out to every family tonight mourning somebody that they've lost and that they couldn't hug one last time, we know that we are doing this for you because we believe in human life, we believe in our city, we believe in our strength, and we believe in a future that we will march towards together. Los Angeles, we will get through this, but we will only get through this if you stay healthy, if you stay strong, and if you stay home. So I'm wishing you this weekend all strength and all love. Thank you for who you are, and what you are doing. In the days ahead, we will define what Los Angeles will look like when we come out of this. But right now, we are in the midst of war to fight and to protect lives. And I thank you for that. May God bless you. God bless your family. Have a good weekend. And with that, I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you.
Thank you. And our first question comes from Steve Gregory from KFI News. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Steve. Mr. Mayor, good afternoon. A um, couple quick questions. Um, the USNS Mercy, uh, we find out, has uh, only got 17 patients on board. And we understand that there have been conversations behind the scenes to possibly accept COVID patients on that ship. I'm, that first question is, have you heard anything of the same? Um, and does that change sort of the dynamic or landscape of what that ship's capability is? Secondly, um, taking a drive around town today, I saw a lot of businesses open uh, mobile, dog grooming, mobile dog grooming, mobile car washing, landscaping, tree cutting. Um, are these all essential services? And finally, um, in uh, lieu of what's been revealed on the county level about them hiring a PR firm to help them get messaging out, uh, has the city done anything similar? Have you had to hire outside agencies for any help putting your messaging or anything else out regarding the virus? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the last question, no, we've been doing it all in-house and with existing resources, and thank you to you and everybody else in the press, as well as people who are just using social media and getting out things like LA Protects, the, the facial coverings that they're using, all the good guidance, the videos, the songs, the music. It's been really amazing. So no, we have not uh, had to use anybody else. In terms of which businesses are supposed to be open and which are not, it's very clear in our orders. Um, I, I didn't hear the entire list. Mobile, mobile dog grooming uh, is not one of those. Uh, people who have landscaping, yes, those things are continuing as long as they are staying distanced. Um, so it's very clear online. We've had, as I mentioned, over 500 plus, and that's a couple days old, I'll try to get updated numbers, uh, inquiries and where we've reached out to companies and made sure that they are shut down. We've visited over 100 of them, and now 27 we have uh, proceedings against, including the first four criminal uh, prosecutions that we launched here today. So, um, and then the f first question on Mercy, um, I have not heard that they're going to be accepting any COVID-19 uh, patients. There's nine patients on board, which speaks to the capacity that we still have today in the Southland. This is kind of, again, our backstop when things get really bad. So I wouldn't worry that there aren't hundreds of people on that ship. They are prepared to accept. But they also have said we're going to be fluid. So right now, that is imagined still as a COVID-19 bubble, a place that uh, can be free from COVID-19. But if things get bad, I think there's some flexibility, they said from the beginning, uh, but we'll have to monitor that day by day with the hospitals, with the bed count, with the ventilators, and we'll take it from there. Thanks. Next question. Thank you. And the next question comes from Alex Michelson from Fox 11 News. Hey, Alex. Go ahead. Hi, Mayor. Uh, you talked about the fact that you've been working for 22 straight days. I know you've been working in government for a very long time. And I'm just wondering, uh, sort of on a personal level, how do you compare this experience to anything else that you've done? Uh, how are you holding up? How are you keeping your mental health strong? And, and what's your advice to all the Angelinos out there that are feeling desperate and anxious and yeah. having mental health challenges right now? Well, first of all, to folks who are struggling with mental health challenges, there is help out there. Um, whether it's the crisis text line, whether it's LA County's mental health line, or as I talked about yesterday for students, uh, LAUSD has counselors available from I think 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. for families and students to speak to as well, because this is tough. And I wouldn't uh, underplay that. I know each night, maybe we feel a little bit less and less. Each one of these briefings sounds like uh, it's the same numbers, the numbers just keep going up, and we wonder when this is going to be over. We're all carrying a lot of pain right now, and I think we're carrying a lot of mourning for those that have died, and for some of us in a very direct way, for all of us just knowing people are dying, and those of us preparing for the people that will die who we don't know yet, and we wonder, is it somebody whom we love? Is it somebody that we know who's fighting another disease? Is it our parents or grandparents because they're um, older and they are more susceptible? So please, to everybody, continue talking to people, reach out. If you have really tough thoughts, reach out to a professional as well, and you can get those uh, referrals that are on coronavirus.lacity.org or just go to the county uh, Department of Public Health, uh, sorry, Mental Health uh, for those referrals. For me, and thank you for asking, Alex, um, I'm strong, I'm steeled, and I'm scared. Um, when people ask me how I'm feeling, it's all three. I'm scared for all of us, for what's a, a ahead, but I feel very strong, and I'm making sure um, you know, that I get at least the minimum I'm out of sleep. Um, my mental health is improved by my family and spending a little bit of time with my daughter at the beginning and end of the day, reading a book to her. 
Um, I haven't watched any shows, I haven't read a book, I haven't done any of those things, but in my experience in government, this is by far the most intense thing that I've ever gone through, and I hope that we will ever go through. Um, experiences with fires, or with earthquakes, or mudslides, tragic shootings. I've, I've been there many years, holding families after a loved one has been killed, talking to people after their home has been destroyed. But I think there's one thing that comes back that trained me for this moment. Each one of those tragedies taught me we can replace anything but a life. So remember that, that's what's precious. And if you're waking up and you're alive, even with the challenges that we each have, that's a good day. And let's just put one foot in front of the other, or if you're home, you know, cross your legs on the couch and get to the next thing in your Netflix queue or call somebody and let's just get on one day at a time. You know, I would never have imagined that 22 days would go by this quickly. I know we have at least that ahead, but you know, if, if we get to the midpoint soon, one month into this, we can do that for another month, and then we'll come out of this, and we will deal with what lies ahead. We'll deal with the economic challenges, we'll deal with the city challenges, and I know that we can meet those together if we can get through this. So thanks for asking, Alex. I hope you're looking after yourself, too. Next question. Thank you, and that comes from the line of Christine Devine from Fox 11. Hey, Go Christine. Ahead. How are you? You there, Christine? Is your phone on mute? Uh, I want to hear from Christine, so. Ms. Devine, your line is open. I don't know if we lost Christine, but hey, Christine, sending you much love. Well, we'll, we'll just move we'll along. She can okay. queue up again if she uh, gets her phone working correctly. Here. We'll get you, Christine, and don't we'll worry. We'll move along to the line of Robert Kovacic from hey. NBC. Please hey, Robert. We're getting closer. How are you, Mayor Garcetti? Good. I'm hanging in there. Two, two questions for you, sir. Um, first of all, you, you mentioned the crisis text line. Uh, I spoke with the founder yesterday, and she is uh, very complimentary about these daily briefings that you were giving, saying that information helps to quell the anxiety so many people are feeling right now. Their, their text line is up almost 50% since this began. They are now seeing a second wave after the initial anxiety of those callers that are fearing domestic violence and child abuse. Yes. Are we concerned and are we seeing an uptick in this in the city of Los Angeles? And secondly, you mentioned about the businesses right now that, that are going to be under prosecution by Mike Fuhrer's office. Is there a way right now for people to directly contact the LAPD if they spot something within those businesses or businesses that are staying open that they think should not? Absolutely. Call, call 311, not 911, um, but call 311. And we're rolling people out pretty quickly. Um, so you can call 311 or the mayor's helpline. Either one we will refer to LAPD or the general LAPD number, which is not a 911, but you can Google that easily. And they have a non-emergency direct line to LAPD. Please let us know that. I met today with the police chief. Uh, he's ready to kind of ramp up uh, this to get uh, even more serious. I think we've had a good week and a strong week. We sent that message. And I always remind people, we can find folks who are not abiding by this, but thank you to the 99.9% .9 of people that are. The data shows that, we know that. Um, for the folks that are still out there that are uh, flaunt, flaunting the law, we will find you, we will come after you, and we appreciate you uh, passing that on to us. In terms of um, the mental health piece too, you know, thanks for pointing that out with, with uh, Nancy Lublin. She's great and their whole team has been doing an amazing job. But in terms of domestic violence and child abuse, we are not hearing that yet, but many, many more people are at home. And if they're in vulnerable settings at home, even with a stay at home order, you should call 911. You can text 911 if you're scared about getting onto the phone. And as I mentioned, we are going to be expanding our domestic violence beds and services to accommodate uh, folks who need to get out of a difficult setting. Do not think that stay at home means you have to stay at home in a dangerous situation. We will and we can help you, but please use 911. If you don't feel safe enough to do that um, on 911 through a call, you can also text 911. We are one of the first cities to be able to do that, and we will send help. Thank you. Next uh, question. Oh, and All the number right, is, sorry, 1877 ask LAPD. Rand of ABC7. Please go ahead. 
Hey, how you doing? Mr. Mayor, thank you once again for taking our questions. I'd like to echo your sentiment to those who are working around the clock and not getting much sleep. ABC7 certainly sends our appreciation to them as well. Yes. Uh, I know in the past you've been hesitant to compare Los Angeles to New York and the numbers there, but with our rate of growth appearing to, at least the rate of growth flattening over the last few days, do you still see us on track to be about 14 days behind New York? or have our paths diverged now? And also having spoken to people on the federal level today, and that sounded more like financial assistance, how about equipment uh, on the federal level? Jared Kushner said yesterday, the national stockpile isn't there for states, it's there for the federal government. And overnight the wording was changed to match that on the federal website. So maybe this is a question better suited for the state, but have you had any inter interactions requesting equipment from the federal government? And if so, how has that gone? Do we have any shortages of things like ventilators or PPE. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so let me start with that because I had a briefing today with Gene Sirocco, who I mentioned is the chief logistics officer now for the city. His usual day job is running just the busiest container port in all of the Americas at the port of LA. But he has an extraordinary uh, background in knowing how to procure, meaning buy things, the supply lines, seeing what's on ships before they get here talking to folks who manufacture uh, in Asia and other places. So he's, he gave me a good update. Um, and we're working very closely with all the hospitals, the Hospital Association, and trying to put together a historic kind of buying collaborative where the city of Los Angeles can bring together the needs of all of our hospitals, not just in LA City, but LA County, and potentially the region, maybe even build with other cities. But because Gene and because of the, the uh, staff that we have here, so talented, we're able to kind of pull that together. The city would front that cash, and then hospitals could get uh, what they need as well. Um, I think hospitals right now are looking, they basically have around, depending on what the equipment is, PPE stuff, about a two-week supply. So we're okay today, but you know we need to make sure that we get deliveries in the next couple weeks coming in steadily. And as our volume ramps up, uh, those supplies could go away very quickly. As I mentioned, our ventilators are down by about 100 today since uh, yesterday, still about 900 or so, but we need more and we're looking at being able to purchase those through the city's kind of collaborative and our emergency operations center uh, and Gene's work as well. So that that is all very important. In terms of being behind New York, um, we still are. New York also has similarly reduced the rate of increase. So it makes me think, we started a few days before them, but that the uh, physical distancing measures are having a similar effect now that we're into about two weeks into those. Both uh, in New York, they're a little under two weeks. We're a little bit over two weeks because we were earlier. So no, I think we're still tracking pretty parallel with them. Uh, I didn't do the calculations today, but yesterday we were 11 days behind them in terms of our per capita deaths in LA County, 14 days in terms of our per capita cases. And remember, they have many, many more tests although we're ramping up and catching up with them uh, on terms of testing. So their numbers were probably larger from that. Uh, in terms of official numbers, we probably have more that are unofficial because we simply haven't gotten those tests back or haven't conducted them with as many people. So I still think that the people should not let up. As I said, in the last two days, we had as many cases as it took us the previous 23 to have. If that doesn't sober you, if that doesn't steal you for this weekend and the week to come, then nothing will. Thanks for the questions. Next question. Thank you, and that comes from the line of Claudia Pichuda from KNX Radio. Hey, Claudia. Go ahead. Hi, Eric. Uh, I, I knew uh, you were asked about uh, making a face mask a requirement for all people, but I'm wondering if uh, maybe you've given any thought to requiring them for essential workers. Mm -hmm. Found uh, the rec center slash temporary shelter situation. So initially it was supposed to be 6,000 beds at 42 rec centers, but um, social distancing has obviously cut that, that down. So now what is the total plan? How many rec centers, how many beds, and by when? So thank it's, you. Thank you, Claudia. So the beds are going to be fluid right now. Um, the numbers that I was announcing, I think now we're opening three more tonight. Uh, let me make sure I get that. Three new rec centers, adding 140 beds, uh, that is going to take us to 695 beds right now. We're looking at another 13 coming in the coming week as well. So maybe a doubling of that to about 15 or 1600. Once we did the calculation, the 6,000 was reduced by two thirds to about 2,000. So it'll be most of the way to those 2,000. Now we'll make decisions next week 
depending on how many host uh, sorry, hotel and motel beds come uh, online and the staffing of those. Just because we get a motel, we need to similarly have staffing just as we would in a rec center that the county and LASA are leading. Uh, that's security, uh, that's health care workers, that's all the things that we have in terms of food, um, and of course allowing people to have showers and stuff, which gets a little easier in a hotel or motel room. So we don't anymore have a fixed number, but there with the hotel and motel rooms is really where the ramping up will be. Uh, thousands of them, um, I think the county was talking about going as high as 15,000, but these are stretch goals. Um, right now, I hope that we can get into the thousands of people in those uh, hotel and motel rooms in the next two to three weeks. If we do that, then I think the sky's the limit. Thankfully, this week, good news, FEMA said that they would reimburse us for hotel and motel rooms for folks before they're sick who are homeless. That's never been done before in an emergency. So thank you to FEMA, who uh, in the previous question asked, whether we've done a lot of work procuring things with the feds, not so much on the procurement, but FEMA has really been a wonderful partner in helping us uh, work through the reimbursement so that we can just buy these things, uh, secure these rooms, et cetera, ourselves. Um, in terms of masks for essential workers, we are working on an order probably in the coming week. Uh, we want to make sure that there's supply. We could say for everybody, you have to have them. And it is our, it was yesterday, it is now our official recommendation that people have that. In terms of mandating that for everybody in, for instance, um, grocery or pharmacy or retail environments, we want to make sure that the capacity is there. So we're working with all the folks that are manufacturing those. We're trying to buy those as well. But you can uh, rest assured, know that in the coming week, we will have that in more official order. I've talked also with the county, the city of Long Beach, and they're going to be moving together with us on that. Thanks, Claudia. Next question. Thank you. And that comes from Haley Winslow from Fox 11. Please go ahead. Hey there. Hey, Mayor. Thank you very much for you everything bet. you're doing. Uh, just out of curiosity, I FaceTimed a woman today at one of the new testing sites, and she pulled up, and her name and confirmation number had already been used. Um, obviously, I'm sure it's an anomaly. It's not something that you're seeing often. But what is being done to make sure that doesn't happen in the future, and how does something like that happen? Sorry, so just to clarify, her, her name had been viewed by, by whom? She pulled up to the testing site and her name and her confirmation number for her appointment had already been used earlier Oh, had already today. been used. Sorry, I thought you said somebody viewed. somebody else. Um, that's the first case I've heard of that. Um, uh, I'd be hard pressed for people to know the name um, and they also have to show something from a printout. So I think that must have been an anomaly. We'll make sure to take care of her. Um, I think on site probably since we had the capacity, hopefully she was able to do it. Some people have also uh, driven up who have not gotten an official um, ability to have one and we've had to turn them away because that is for only certain people and they say, oh no, I went through it, I had something, but you have to have that confirmation. But in this case, that's the first I've heard of that, but we'll take care of her if she had one, if somebody took it, um, I'm surprised they'd know her name or number, uh, but we will make sure she's taken care of. Thanks so much. And she obviously yeah. wants to make sure her results are hers. Yeah, it, it, of course. Um, we'll make sure. Those are t two separate bar uh, codes, so we will. she will have the integrity of her test. Nobody else will get that, especially if she's stepped up there. Um, but if you haven't passed that on, if somebody didn't talk to her there, will you please let us know? You can even just uh, send that to mayor.garcetti at lacity.org. Thank you. Next question, please. Thank you, and that comes from the line of Jin Tak Han from the UCLA Daily Bruin. Please go ahead. Hi there. Hi, Mayor. Um, thanks for taking my question. Of course. Um, Governor Newsom mentioned uh, towards, his, um, towards the end of his press conference today that there's a, the state is considering serological antibody testing for um, COVID. And does the city, has the city considered such like antibody testing or antibody treatment of any sort? Absolutely. We've been following this closely. Again, uh, the city isn't really in the medical business, but we've stepped into that lane to help out because everybody's stretched thin. And we've had great partners with county who have led the public health side uh, marvelously and, of course, their official hospitals and the planning really beautifully, too. Um, in terms of stepping into that place, which would give us, again, these tests will show people if they've had it. Not necessarily that they're contagious and folks that are contagious. As Dr. Ferrer said yesterday, it's a different sort of test. But being able to see the incidents out there, I think, is very important. And these tests will be critical moving forward as we begin to reopen up the economy in future weeks and letting us know who has carried this and who, who now 
presumably is immune, although the research is ongoing whether people, you know, whether people could get it a second time or not. So um, I've spoken with mayors up and down California and Santa Ana, they're trying to do that. These tests are still forthcoming, so a lot of the technology of them, they're folks that are assessing false positives and false negatives that might come from them. But absolutely, we want to have that information. And as I said last night, we're working together with the county <clears throat> and also with uh, USC, uh, Stanford, some other uh, institutions, UCLA also on prevalence studies. In other words, how many people out there are walking around with COVID-19 and we don't know. Uh, one study showed up north that it could be as many as 8% in Santa Clara County. That's a staggering number compared to the actual numbers we're seeing coming through with tests. Second point is, too, it would be very helpful because people who do feel that they've been sick, we can confirm whether they've had COVID-19 or not. People who do get through the rigorous um, kind of screens to get a test in one of our centers right now, as Dr. Ferrer said, and they have an even more rigorous one for the county public health lab, it's coming back only about 12 or 13 percent of those people who are highly suspected of having COVID-19 as actually having it, meaning close to 90 percent of people have something else uh, with uh, the sort of symptoms that are similar to COVID-19. So uh, having those blood tests will help us get much uh, better numbers. We're absolutely looking at those. As long as we can get reimbursed, we're happy to help do that and to step into that lane. Um, but I know the county is looking at that in a number of different ways, and we'll take the lead. Thank you. Next question. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. And our last question for this evening comes from Abel Alamillo from Telemundo. Please go ahead. Abel, hola. Are you there? Oh, okay. Telemundo. Day to brace for a big increase of COVID-19 cases starting next week, possibly up to 1,000 cases daily. How concerning is this? And... Uh, here we are in the hills of another uh, weekend. What's your message to Angelinos regarding social distancing and stay at home? Uh, en español, la doctora Ferrer advirtió hoy de un posible incremento bastante alto en los casos de coronavirus comenzando la próxima semana, posiblemente mil casos al día. ¿Cuál es uh, su reacción? Y estamos a punto de iniciar el fin de semana. ¿Qué consejos le daría a la población con respecto al distanciamiento social y de quedarse en casa? So I'll answer in English and then I'll answer in Spanish and go straight into my Spanish remarks. And thank you to everybody. Sorry, Christine Devine, hopefully we'll get you get back uh, uh, for your question on Monday. Um, first of all, it is absolutely concerning to me. I wanted to share good news because I think people deserve the reward of knowing that your actions are working, that we're seeing uh, less high rates of increase than we saw a week before. That said, rates are, sorry, numbers are still increasing. They're still increasing. So. We're at 500, 500, you know, we're going to have some days where we get to 700, 800, 900, and probably as many as 1,000 cases and beyond. Whether it continues to go up will depend on us. So my message is to stay at home, to stay healthy, uh, to make sure that you continue to do all the things that we've recommended. We don't enjoy, I certainly don't enjoy doing any of this. While I've said at the very first day that I've made these, all these decisions, with a heavy heart, I've made them with a very clear mind that this is the way we will save lives. And so don't let things slip. Don't start to say, oh, I can go out for a drive or the whole family can go to the supermarket or maybe I can you know, play a game of something in the park. We are looking for folks. We have many city employees that are putting their own lives on the line to enforce this measure but you can help them stay safe. You can help them protect you, and you can protect yourself by staying at home. So we will see those numbers continue to grow, even as we hope the rate decreases, giving us at least a little light at the end of the tunnel, that we know that there will be an end in sight. But the peak of this is still weeks off in absolute numbers. That was something I tried to talk about earlier this week, uh, that you know, there's the rate of increase and flattening the curve is about flattening, slowing the rate of increase. But the absolute number will continue to go up for some time until we hit that peak weeks or even more than a month from now. So we need to keep with this. We need to save lives. We need to make sure that we stay at home. Um, thank you for everybody in English. I'll switch to Spanish for that as well and then I'll say a couple words. Mi mensaje es, es la misma. Es importante que todos nosotros uh, toman estas órdenes uh, uh, 
a nuestros corazones. Después, acciones pueden salvar las vidas de nuestras familias, de nuestros vecinos, de, de nuestros padres y madres, nuestros hijos y hijas. Y necesitamos a continuar con estas acciones. Quédense uh, en buena salud, pero quédense en casa. Cuando nosotros pueden, uh, uh, qu pueden uh, quedarse en casa, nosotros podemos uh, dar la esperanza a nuestras personas de tercera edad, uh, a nuestras personas uh, que, uh, que tener uh, aflicciones uh, médicos. Tenemos la oportunidad en, con estas acciones, con estas órdenes también, finalmente no solamente a salvar las vidas de angelinos, pero a tener un futuro aquí en Los Ángeles con una nueva economía, con trabajos, con prosperidad, pero nuestras acciones ahora pueden prevenir la continuación de la contaminación. Mi mensaje es la misma, quédense en casa. With that, let me uh, say a few other words in Spanish as well to share information. Gracias a todos y muy buenas tardes. Antes de, del fin de semana, les recuerdo, lo más seguro es quedarse en casa. Y si tienen que ir al mercado o a, a la farmacia, por favor, lleva una cobertura facial. Como lo habíamos recomendado el miércoles, hoy los Centros para el Control y la Prevención de Enfermedades están recomendando también el uso de coberturas facial en lugares públicos para evitar la propagación del COVID-19. Hoy en el condado de Los Ángeles hubieron 521 casos nuevos. En total tenemos 4,566 casos. En la ciudad hubieron 260 casos nuevos y en total 2,047. Y hoy tuvimos 11 muertes en el condado y ya son un total de 89 fallecidos. Y lo siento mucho a las familias eh, que están llorando esta noche porque un miembro de su familia es uno de los fallecidos. Sin embargo, con la colaboración de todos, seguimos haciendo todo lo posible para aplanar la curva, incluyendo ampliando acceso a las pruebas de detección. Abrimos tres nuevos sitios uh, de pruebas de detección hoy. En total, tenemos 12 sitios de pruebas en el condado, con siete en la ciudad. Y no se importa dónde uh, tú vives en el condado de Los Ángeles, uh, tú eres elegible uh, para estas uh, pruebas. Tenemos capacidad para hacer 3,500 pruebas y, uh, uh, por día. Y en el total hemos hecho 16,000 pruebas en la ciudad y el condado. Esto combinado con otros sitios de pruebas, quiere decir que se habrán hecho aproximadamente 52,000 pruebas en el condado al final de la próxima semana. Esto es increíble. Y gracias a los bomberos, a los voluntarios en estos sitios por su trabajo. Para determinar si eres elegible, vaya a la página coronavirus. .lacity.org. Esta noche también quiero anunciar que la ciudad está apoyando a los residentes que viven en vecindarios que requieren permisos para estacionarse. Si ya renovó su permiso, pero el permiso nuevo no llegará antes de que su permiso de vence, uh, se vence, la ciudad la mandará un correo electrónico con su permiso nuevo. Este permiso durará dos semanas y lo puede imprimir en, en casa. Tendrás dos semanas sin recibir una infracción por tener un permiso vencido. Sin embargo, debes de renovar tu permiso de estacionamiento y cumplir con los límites de tiempo. Además de nuestros esfuerzos locales, empezamos a ver llegar el apoyo federal. Y gracias a nuestros líderes federales. La semana que viene, nuestra ciudad recibirá 50 millones de dólares del Departamento de Vivienda y Desarrollo Urbano para fortalecer programas para empresarios de pequeñas empresas, familias de bajos recursos y algunos de nuestros residentes más vulnerables. Además, recibiremos 31 millones de dólares en subsidios 
para el desarrollo de comunidades para ampliar nuestro programa para prevenir desalojos y ofrecer a Angelinos servicios sociales y apoyo económico. Y eso incluye 16 millones de dólares en subsidios de emergencia para apoyar a nuestros vecinos sin hogar o a familias al borde de la indigencia. Y también 2.8 millones de dólares para vivienda asequible para personas con VIH. También esperamos que llegue el dinero para familias trabajadoras y el programa federal de préstamos para pequeñas empresas. Y el Congreso uh, empezará a tomar acción en desarrollar su nuevo paquete para recuperación económica. Estos fondos federales servirán para salvar vidas, así como nuestro trabajo para proteger a nuestros residentes sin hogar durante, durante esta crisis. En los últimos dos años, el programa a Bridge Home abrió 12 refugios nuevos y 813 camas temporales para alojar a las personas sin vivienda. Para aumentar nuestra capacidad, el refugio YWCA de Hollywood agregó 60 camas en el mes pasado. Mañana abriremos nuestro refugio número 13 en el VA, eh, en la Administración de Veteranos, en el oeste de Los Ángeles, eh, un mes temprano. Para asegurar la sana distancia, empezaremos con solo 50 personas, todos veteranos sin hogar y sin síntomas de COVID-19, pero que tienen más alto riesgo en enfermarse en las calles. Hoy empezamos a alojar a personas sin hogar a hoteles y moteles. Y también agregamos refugios de emergencia en centros de recreación por toda la ciudad. En total tenemos 695 camas en la ciudad. Finalmente, quisiera anunciar nuestra colaboración con la plataforma Inspiring Service, Inspiración de Servicio, para conectar a organizaciones que necesitan ayuda con personas que quieren trabajar como, como voluntarios. Para participar, visita volunteer.lamayor.org y haga clic en Nonprofit Directory. Tenemos tantas donaciones generosas. Nunca he estado tan orgulloso de Los Ángeles como ahora. Seguimos adelante juntos. Amigos, hermanas y hermanos, quédense protegidos, quédense en buena salud, quédense en casa. Mucha fuerza y mucho amor. Gracias. <música>